Electro. Hey guys, welcome back to Play Retro. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Javi, and today I'm bringing you guys five of the absolute best tips I could find for this handheld right here. This is the R36S. And yeah, let's get right into it. Let's get this thing booted up. Check out that sweet boot logo. Okay, so we're gonna start off strong. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually get this function button to actually work. So that's tip number one, getting your function button working. So this button right here, where it says FN, normally this is useless. But if you followed my tutorial, my R36S master guide, you should be able to do this. So basically you're gonna need some files. They're called DTB files. I've uploaded them to my mega account. You guys can go grab them if you haven't done so already. And then let's go into a game so I can show you this thing actually works. So here I am in uh, Pokemon Blue. And as you can see, look, FN plus X, that brings me into the, the RetroArch menu. FN plus Y gives me my FPS, and I can toggle that. FN plus B takes a snapshot or a screenshot, and then FN plus A, this pauses the game. But yeah, it works pretty well. You still have um, start and select as well to exit out of the game. And yeah, it's pretty dope. So let me show you how you can actually enable this. So after you follow my tutorial, head over into a retro arc over here. Um, you're gonna have to do it for both. So start with the first one. It's gonna bring you into this menu, go down into settings, then head into input. Then down into input, you wanna go into hotkeys. And then right over here, hotkey enable. You wanna set this to button 16 which is your function button. And this will only work if you have those correct DTB files. And um, by default, this is gonna be set to select, which is button 12. You wanna change that. Um, I, I've gone ahead and I customized the hotkeys already. So yeah, once you're done, you can head out of there, back out, go to the configuration file and just save current configuration. And then you can quit out of RetroArch and you have to do the same thing for RetroArch 32. Is this one right here and then yeah do the same thing go into settings input hotkeys set this to 16 and then customize your, your hotkeys however you like then just remember to save that and you're good to go so that is tip number one getting your function key to actually be useful and work so tip number two, this one's really, really important. This is a game changing feature. This is something called quick mode. So you wanna head over into your options, you wanna scroll down. And as you can see, I already have it enabled. It says disable quick mode, but this will say en enable quick mode. You wanna click that, turn it on, give it a second to do its thing. And now what this will basically do, let's go back into a game. Let's say I'm playing Pokemon, right? Not only will this auto save and auto load for me, but like let's say I'm in a game, uh, I've, I've done what I have to do, but now I can't I have to stop playing. You're gonna go ahead and press R3 and the power. And now you'll see ArcOS will do a save state for me and will shut down. So now I can put this in my pocket and then when I'm ready to play again, watch what happens when I boot it up. So as you can see, this booted up right back to where I was. So I can skip all the menus. I don't have to look through a um, game list or nothing. It just keeps me in that mode. And this is this is a feature that is not unique to this device. On other um, custom firmware, it's called like quick resume or cartridge mode. That's what I call it, cartridge mode, where it's, it feels like you're using one cartridge, like one game at a time. And this is awesome. You guys should really make use of this feature right here. This is called quick mode. And if you don't like it, you can go ahead and turn it off in the settings, just like I showed you. Okay, so up next, tip number three is to use C to C cables to basically give yourself internet with your phone. So this won't work with every single phone, but it will work with some phones. So you want to try it. If you have a C to C cable like this, check this out. So over on your on your phone, you want to go into connections, then you want to go down to hotspot and tethering, and then right over here, this this option right here should light up. It says USB tethering. Go ahead and turn that on, and you want to make sure you're on Wi-Fi. 
and boom. You can see I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And now I should have internet on this. You don't have to turn on Wi-Fi or anything in the, in the settings. As soon as you're sharing internet here, you should be able to connect. So as you can see, now my, my R36S is scraping media. I'm grabbing um, an, a screenshot and I'm also grabbing a video for each game in my PlayStation. Just like that, we're using my, my wife's phone. So this is a great tip for anybody who doesn't have a Wi-Fi dongle. You may want to try your phone. It can work. However, I do want to make a note. This is not going to work with every phone. I had to, this is my, this does not work with my phone or my other phone, but for some reason it works with my wife's phone. So I don't know why. I just, it's just something I noticed. Just try it. It may work for you. It may not work for you. Okay guys, but of course the most important thing you should be doing with this tip is actually to update your R36S to the latest version of ArcOS. So as you can see, I'm all the way up to date. But if you are not, please update your R36S to the latest version of ArcOS. So up next, I'm actually gonna show you how to change this right here, this loading screen. This is very simple. So, but I'm gonna have to head over to the computer to show you how to do that, so. Okay guys, so go ahead and insert your TF1 SD card into your computer. Okay, you can close boot the boot partition and we're focusing here on easy ROMs. So in easy ROMs, if you scroll down to letter L, you will see a folder called launch images. Go ahead and click that and inside you'll find a loading.png file. Um, so this file right here, this is the file you basically want to replace. So, and I have some instructions right over here on how you can actually um, change it. Um, but this is the one I'm using right now. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and upload this to my Mega if you want this exact picture. You guys can take and use it yourselves. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I like it. But if you don't like it, you can create one yourself. And then over here, this is the criteria. It must be a JPEG. It must be named loading.jpg, and the name is case sensitive. It must be 480 pixels in width and uh, 320 in height. It must be a 24 bit depth. So um, easiest way to do this is just head over to Canva. I've already created one right here. Um, go ahead and cre create design, and then you're gonna do 480 by 320, which I have right here. I made one already. This is supposed to be like a little dinosaur one. But it's very easy, just, you know, maybe change the background to something and then add some elements. Something cool, whatever you like. Maybe this dinosaur right here. And then maybe add some text. Um, go ahead and make that bold. Maybe let's change the font or something. And it's pretty much that simple. Once you're satisfied with whatever design you've created, go ahead and uh, name this to loading right here. And then you can export it. Go click this share button right here and then go to download. And then right here, instead of PNG, you want to set it to JPEG and click download. So this is going to download two images because I have both here. But, um, yeah, once you have that, you can just go ahead and replace the file. So like I already have it right here. It will look like this or whatever. And then you're going to basically just drag this over this image and overwrite it. When it says replace, just click yes and you're good to go. So you can see the properties in here. 480 by 320 and then 24-bit depth right here. And of course, it's named loading.png.jpg. Uh, and yeah, guys, that's how you change your loading screen. Tip number five is how to adjust your brightness without having to like go into the menu and stuff. Like here, you can adjust brightness like this. But what if you want to do it without having to go into the menu? You can press uh, R3 and then press up on the D-pad or down on the D-pad. So that's pretty cool just in case you were wondering. Okay, and one last tip I wanna give you guys is for example, like on this Switch theme, by default, this doesn't look like this. This looks like this, right? If you're using the Switch theme, when you go into your options menu, it's gonna look like this and it's kind of hard to read. 
So by, to correct this, you can just press select and you want to change game list view style to, for instead of automatic, just set it to basic and that will change that menu for you. So you can still have the options menu while using this theme. And the same thing can be applied to RetroArch or any um, other games list that you don't want to use a grid view like how I have here. So yeah guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you found these uh, tips very helpful. I think if you make the best with what you have with this R36S, you're gonna have a great time with this device. So yeah guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is there any um, tip I missed? Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. My name is Javi, and I'll see you in the next one.